So I was in a bus going back from Beverly Hills to downtown LA. I was staying in downtown LA with my mom. And we had gone to Hollywood, then to Beverly Hills, using only public transportation. So, so far, so good, right? We It was one of our last days in LA. So it really was so far, so good. Until that bus. That bus was when I realized why people who can afford a car they buy a car and they never look back and they never think about using public transport because that bus ride was something unimaginable for me. So we're heading back on that bus and we're expecting it to be a one hour ride back to downtown LA because it's super far. Okay. That's okay. And okay. 70% of the people on the bus are regular people. They're just tired going back from their jobs to their homes. Okay. Awesome. But then about 25% of the people are homeless people, but usually minding their own business, but there's, we'll get there, but there's this thing with homeless people in the U S right now, especially in places like LA, which is a, a culture shock in itself. But the thing is, the 1% of the people that were in that bus, or the 5% more accurately, so we we climbed to that back part of the bus, which has like a couple of steps to get to. And my mom is sat on the seat in front of me, and then I'm sat behind her, like only one seat in each row on the right and two on each row on the left. And there this dude who I'd seen was a bit odd looking, to say the least. But okay, he didn't seem very, um, how can we say this? He seemed like he was very, um, he had used something, you know, some kind of substance in the near term. So it looked like he wasn't really... He was kind of, he looked out of his mind. Okay. But okay. I'm not judging until suddenly I'm there sat on my seat, just hoping that we get there soon enough. And I look from the corner of my eye and this dude simply takes out a bong in the middle of a public bus. And starts using something that I'm not sure if it was legal or not, because California has very lax rules about substances that you can use. But I'm pretty sure you can't use them on a fucking bus. And there's this dude simply using substances on a public bus. And it wasn't even that late. It was like maybe seven tops. Yeah, tops, eight for 8 p.m. And the dude's out of, totally out of his mind using a bong in the middle of a bus. A bus with regular Joes. You know, most people there were just, they just wanted to get home, man. And there's this dude completely out of his mind using a bong. That was the greatest culture shock I had in this trip. And really, it had been a decade since the last time I went to the U.S. And from... 2004 to 2014, I went a bunch of times and I really have a very close relationship to the U.S. because when I was a kid, I studied at an American school for lots of years. So I kind of was raised in two parallel cultures because I'm from Brazil, but at the same time, I was studying at an American school. So I was very influenced by the culture and I had a bunch of American friends and now I have a bunch of new American friends as well. So I kind of know what to expect going there, but there really were some things that I didn't expect. And this was one of them to, to take public transportation and have someone do in front of me. That was really something I wasn't expecting. So that's the first one. Another thing that I really wasn't expecting because I'd never seen that anywhere else. And I, I've traveled a lot. And I've traveled a lot through South America and Europe, and i never seen this. But, like, really, it's unfathomable for me to say this, because when people think about 
America, the USA, we think about it like it's a great place. Make America great again. And really, when you go to a Walgreens or CVS or something like that, in downtown LA or San Francisco for that matter. And simply they have everything locked up. So you have to call a guy to open the door. Like there's like this, um, there are like, there's like a glass. So you can't get things like toothpaste, deodorant, you know, um, shaving cream, basic stuff, basic stuff. That's super cheap for an American even with inflation and everything, but it's still like eight, 10, 12, $20 tops. And you have to call a guy to open it because people were stealing so much that they simply had to do this because they made this new rule that if you steal up to $1,000 or something like that, the police simply won't go after you, which is insane. And that was a huge culture shock, man, because I'm from Brazil, of all places, and Brazil has a very bad rep, and sometimes we do live up to the expectation, but most of the time, not really. And I've never seen something similar in Brazil. You, you can go to, to a drugstore, a pharmacy, anywhere in Brazil, or even a supermarket, anywhere, unless it's something really expensive, like a television or a video game. Some stuff might be locked up like that, but for regular stuff, you'll never see that. Even in the worst places that I've went to in Brazil, you, you don't see that kind of thing because it's kind of unfathomable. Like if you're going to steal something, at least steal something that's worth something, you know? Anyways, that's number two. What's number three? Oh, yeah. Number three is I, I didn't expect to see so many signs and so many things in Spanish in LA. Of course, I knew that there are a lot of people that are from Mexican descent, especially, and from other Latin American places as well. I knew that, but I really, it was, it's not a bad surprise. It's a, it's a, a nice culture shock. It's, I really wasn't expecting because I'd been to New York and I'd been to Florida and I don't remember seeing any signs in other languages other than English. So it was pretty, pretty interesting to see all of those signs in Spanish and people actually speaking Spanish. So I was expecting that I might have to speak Spanish to order food sometimes or in some stores maybe because I was actually embracing it because I, I do speak Spanish. So it wouldn't be a problem really. It would be actually kind of cool. But anyways, I wasn't expecting to be on the subway and everything and see a lot of a lot of signs in Spanish, a lot of ads in Spanish. And it's funny because they're not the same ads in Spanish and English. So you see the target audience thing. So some companies are targeting people who speak Spanish and others aren't, which is interesting. And also on the subway sometimes they would make the announcements in English and in Spanish, which was kind of cool. And I wasn't expecting that. What else? That was the third one. Oh, this one, it, it, this one is a very funny man. So I went to Nevada as well. We, we got a car from LA and we went to Reno because we have some friends there and we stayed with them and they were awesome. Thank you so much. If you're watching this guys, but so th there was this day I stopped at uh, a gas station and I figured it would be cheaper to pay at the counter because some gas stations, it's cheaper if you don't pay with the credit card. And my friend called me exactly when I was doing this thing with the gas station, right? So I, I was with my phone talking to my friend and I, I went into the convenience store to buy a Coke and pay for the gas. And as I walk into the convenience store, I look left and I fucking kid you not in a gas station convenience store, there was a casino. That was fucking insane for me when I saw a casino, like really 
it wasn't just one or two slot machines. It was a full-fledged casino inside the gas station. I couldn't believe. Like, I was talking to my friend. I was like, dude, you won't believe this. There's a fucking casino in the gas station. Like, really, that was, like, my, my mind blown, man. And, of course, now I know that Nevada is not just about Las Vegas. And other places also have a bunch of casinos in Nevada. And that's a huge chunk of their revenue and their economy comes from the tourists that come to the casinos. And also there's a lot of business tourism because they have, the casinos have usually have huge hotels. In this case, it was in the gas station. But anyways, it, it was a bit of a culture shock because I wasn't expecting this. We don't have casinos in Brazil. And yeah, in, in many other places, I never saw it like that. Even in places that there are casinos that I've been to, they're more, you know, far between. And you, I'd never seen something like that on a gas station. Here in Brazil, depending on where you go, especially in poor neighborhoods, you do find some slot machines occasionally on a bar. But that's that, you know, you don't have a full-fledged casino. So that was insane for me, really. I, I wasn't expecting. That was number four. Number five. And just to be clear, guys, these are the culture shocks. I know there are many great things about America, and I might do a video about this as well because I think it's interesting for people outside of America, like people over here in Brazil and other places in South America and Europe, because I've lived in Europe as well. And so I know a lot about these three continents, right? And I think there are some things that we could adopt from the Americans in terms of mindset and some things that they do that are good. And of course, there are some things that they do that uh, we couldn't understand. But, you know, the same thing, it goes both ways. The same way they, they come here and they say like, dude, these guys are awesome in some aspects and terrible in others. It's not a video to dust this on America. Uh, there are many great things, but really it's the culture shocks, right? So number five, yeah, this unsafe feeling in some big cities like in LA and San Fran, to be honest, in San Francisco, it didn't really feel unsafe, but I really only had one day in San Francisco and we were on a car and basically doing a city tour and stopping in a few of the, the main points. But really, yeah, San Francisco is actually better than I expected from what I'd heard from people. So it was actually looked safer than I was expecting, which was great. I love San Francisco. But in LA, because we stayed downtown and that's where like every night I had to go to downtown LA, right? It really, depending on the street, it really didn't feel very safe because like I said in the beginning, there's a very deep problem with drugs in general in America. And I know there's a very big problem that starts many times with those pain medications. And there are a lot of movies about this. There are some doc documentaries or some TV series. You've probably heard of them. You know, there's one th that I saw on Netflix. And now I'm not sure how it's called in English, but it's like Pain Mafia in Portuguese. Mafia da Dor in English. What's the name? Let me try to find it. And it, it's really, it's really sad. Like how seeing those people, you know, you can see that most of them probably had a regular life and something happened in their life. And I know that in many aspects, American society is kind of sick and, but it's kind of sad. And, you know, you see all of those people who clearly they, yeah, I can't find it right now, the name of this movie in English, but anyway, it's kind of sad, man, to see all of those people out of their minds or, you know, I know that many people, when you, you go homeless, of course you don't, you don't become homeless because you want to. There are many things that may happen in someone's lives to trigger that. And it kind of, you get into a 
vicious cycle and it's very hard to get out of because many people they they weren't even addicts before they became homeless but once you're inside and you're trying to numb that pain it's hard to get out so i didn't want to get too much into a dark turn over here but it is what it is downtown la some places if you go close to uh union station it's union station right in la fuck i forgot the name yeah the, the main train station and then yeah it's union station yeah so yeah if you go to downtown la close to union station close to to the civic center the grand park or to the pershing square it's kind of sad and you know on that bus ride where you went through downtown and it's it's kind of it's weird. It's it's very odd. It's something very odd to see. And I know it's not exclusive to LA and it's not exclusive to the US, but it wasn't something that I was expecting. So that's why I say it was a culture shock. So that was number five. Well, number six is something that's happier, I guess. Something more upbeat. Driving in the US is kind of insane in the beginning. So there are many things that you can do while driving over there that you can't do anywhere else or not anywhere else that I'd driven before, at least. For instance, there are some places where you can turn that for me, it was unfathomable that I could turn left in some places. For instance, there are stop signs at some um, highway crossings, which was pretty odd. And sometimes... Like the GPS would tell me to turn left and I would be like, are you sure I can turn left? I was kind of creeped out. Like, I don't want to crash this car. It's a rental. And really, there are many instances where, like, for instance, uh, of something that was very odd for me, in many places, there's... um, So you have, you have the road and it goes both ways, right? And one of the the lanes, you kind of can go to this central lane from either way. If you're going this way or that way, you can go to the central lane. And that's a lane only for turning or for, for making a U-turn. So that was very odd. I'd never seen that before. I mean, maybe the, the other times I went to America, I'd seen it, but I'd never driven there before. So it was very weird for me in the beginning. Like, I was like, what the hell does this mean? Like, they had, like, this, this symbol with the, the arrows pointing to the, both sides. And I was like, what the hell is this? So it it, it took me a while to, to figure that out. Also, many times, actually, most of the time, I think you can turn right on the on red, which was also a bit weird for me. And also, yeah, dude, the whole system with the turning signs was very odd for me. Like, because many times you have like a highway going, merging with another highway or like doing a cross like this. And you have the, you have the lights and there's a time for people to turn left and both sides can turn left. And there is a time for people to turn right. Both sides can turn right. And some of the people can go straight ahead while the others turn right. So, Dude, it's kind of confusing in the beginning. So driving in America in the beginning was kind of confusing for me. And I was kind of freaked out in the beginning because of that. I, I almost crashed twice in the first day, like half an hour into getting the car. But eventually I kind of understood the general, I got the general idea of what I should be doing and understood like, Oh, this means this, this means that. So eventually I got just a bit, but in the beginning it was a bit odd. So driving there was a bit odd in the beginning. I could do a whole video about this really because I, I drove, I never drove so much. I drove like 1600 miles in 20 days or something, something like that. No, less than 20 days, actually like 17, 18. Yeah. Something like that. Anyways, other culture shock, 
how expensive everything is right now. Like really, of course, I think it might be even actually watered down in my comprehension because, of course, in 10 years, you kind of expect things to go up. But anyways, I think, at least from what I hear, because everyone was saying, oh, the inflation and everything is so expensive and blah, blah, blah. So I think maybe in the last few years, it's been it's been faster. But anyways, things were very expensive, I thought. Like, apart from some consumer goods, some electronics that pretty much stayed the same, like guitars, I think were pretty much didn't change the price like nominally in dollars. So if you if you think of it, it kind of actually deflated for some things. But gas was much more expensive. Food is much more expensive. Anything that you need services is much more expensive. Like you can't get a hotel for less than a hundred bucks. And of course I the hotels I got were in California. So I know California is probably one of the most expensive places in the whole world. But anyways, was a bit more expensive than I was expecting. And especially because now also the dollar is strong compared to the Heao. And the the times when we went there a lot, the Heao was extraordinarily strong. So that's why we were going there so much because it was cheap for us at the time, relatively. So I really wasn't expecting everything to be so expensive, which now makes me think that things in Brazil are super cheap <laughs> comparatively. Like I said in the beginning with like a deodorant, $10, that's insane. That type of thing, that type of basic thing, I think it's very expensive. And of course, if you think, oh, but you know, someone making hamburgers in California is making $20 an hour. Okay. So I get, I get it, but for people going to the U.S. from other places, it's expensive as fuck to think of $15 for a combo, like a, at McDonald's or something, to get a Big Mac with fries and, and soda. It, it's too expensive, man. But it is what it is. Things are more expensive. And what else? These were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven already. Yeah, I think. I think that's enough for now, right? Seven culture shocks. I know some of them might not be so shocking, like things being more expensive or, you know, driving is a bit different. I know those are not shocking, but some of them were very shocking for me, especially the guy in the beginning with the bong inside the bus. And like I said in in the middle of the video as well, I think I have a, a very realistic view of the US and of what to expect. So it wasn't like I was prone to be shocked that much. I know that for people, because there are many people outside of the US who glorify the US as if it's like this magical land, fairy tale, and they'd probably be much more shocked. I wasn't that shocked because I was kind of expecting it. But anyways, I hope you like this and please comment about how you're seeing America in the latest times. And if you had any culture shocks when you went there, I'd, I'd love to know about this because I think it's fascinating to see how people view things. And also, yeah, just keep posted, subscribe, like, you know, send it to your friend, you know, just do the, do that thing that we always do. And keep posted. I'm going to leave some cool video for you to keep watching. I hope you like this. Keep rocking. Cheers. See ya.